Welcome students with this lecture we start uh, uh, today we start our journey towards the quantum mechanics course uh, included in semester 5 uh, of the Calcutta University for that is the qua, qua, this is the quantum mechanics course that uh, the semester 5 students of present uh, present year Calcutta University Calcutta University students are going to take up uh, before we come to the subject matter of this uh, of this um, uh, semester, let me first remind what we uh, recall what we have done in the last class, uh, uh, that is in the modern physics class. We have seen that the, the, the as per de Broglie uh, hypothesis, every moving material particle is associated with a uh, wave uh, matter wave and the de Broglie wavelength is given by la lambda is equal to h by p where h is Planck's constant and p is the uh, momentum of the particle uh, and it is found that whenever lambda the de Broglie wavelength becomes comparable with the physical dimension of the problem the quantum effect becomes significant and in fact it is found that in the <coughs> in, uh, in the case of microscopic particle quantum mechanics uh, becomes important uh, so far theoretical description is concerned a particle a moving particle can adequately be described by by the wave packet so that the mm, group velocity of the wave packet is equal to particle velocity for relativistic as well as for non-relativistic particles um, and ultimately uh, using uh, some technique that is the air Bohr's correspondence principle we first write the air classical energy expression and then replace the uh, dynamical variables by their corresponding Hermitian operator and landed up with the uh, Schrodinger equation in one Schrodinger equation in 1D it reads as IH cross del psi of xt del t is equal to minus h line square by twice n del 2 psi of x t del x 2 plus v psi x t so this is the energy operator this is kinetic, kinetic energy operator this is potential energy operator and then the operates on the operand wave function psi of x t uh, if V does not depend on uh, time, then we can decouple it, this equation into space part and time part. This, so, sorry, this is time dependent Schrodinger equation, D for dependent. Uh, we write it as phi of x, T of T, and we get that uh, this is this equation satisfies the in one dimension this is but E is the energy eigen energy and corresponding T part is T depends on the energy value E, it has this dependence. So, this equation is known as time independent Schrodinger equation. When the potential does not have time dependence, the one generally needs to solve this equation subject to the uh, 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 with suitable potentials and boundary conditions. The, now, the, uh, <coughs> this is known as wave function and it is assumed in quantum mechanics that if you know the wave function, we can know everything about the system as admitted by the uncertainty principle. <coughs> then, uh, we, we have introduced probability current density. The probability current density uh, represents the particle flux, uh, particle flux, and we have, uh, if we want to corroborate theory with the experiment, we know that whenever we measure and uh, perform an experiment to measure a dynamical variable, the act 
spectrum measurement is represented by a by an Hermitian operator and the outcome of the mm, experiment is one of the eigenvalue of the Hermitian operator and the macroscopic quantity that we are uh, we encounter in classical physics is nothing but the in average uh, ensemble average or the expectation value corresponding to the operator and we know that uh, as per Hamiltonian concepts of classical physics any op any operator uh, or a, any for operator in uh, operator can be represented as a function of position momentum and time so if we know the operator corresponding to position and momentum any other operator can be um, can be constructed in principle care must be taken for for the hermeticity of the resultant quantum operator uh, now coming to the criteria that should be satisfied by the wave function it is known that as per both into a born interpretation psi star psi represents the probably position probability density and in non relativistic quantum mechanics the particle uh, should move from one point to another point as particle so psi star psi has to be continuous um, at every point that is to say that psi is continuous at every every point this is one condition and if the particle is not subjected to any um, impulsive force then its momentum changes smoothly so the momentum uh, which is the f momentum means the ma minus i h cross del psi del t uh, it's, uh, sorry del psi del x it must be continuous that is we say that first derivative of the wave function must be continuous provided um, there is no impulsive force the this restriction uh, changes when we uh, we have uh, an impulsive force like delta function or infinite uh, the force that acts at the walls of infinite potential well <coughs> and furthermore that wave function must go to zero asymptotically for bound state problem but the scattering problem the wave function may not go to zero and in that case we use for uh, scattering case we have talked about the normalization in terms of either box normalization or delta function normalization whatever may be the case the box uh, scattering case or the Mm, scattering case or the bound state case the wave function should be square integrable that is psi star psi integrated psi star psi integrated over all space all space must be finite this is the square integrable case um, with this concept where we shall so come to the problem problem uh, solving first as in first example we consider an infinite potential well that is the uh, particle in a box we have considered this one uh, during the development of Schrodinger equation uh, but we sh here we shall consider some other points one dimensional asymmetric potential well so first let me explain this thing we have a potential well the potential let the potential be zero within the well and it is infinity uh, on i on either side this is the meaning of infinite potential well then rectangular means this is a cartesian coordinate system whose x axis represents the position and y axis represents the um, potential so this is the meaning of cartesian 
Asymmetric means the potential well extends from 0 to A. This is asymmetric potential well. And well means this is a potential and there is a sudden drop in potential. That's why it is well. So this is the uh, meaning of each of the term in the heading. <coughs> we consider a particle a particular initialization of the problem is like this. Uh, mass M is within the world. What is its dynamics? This is our, uh, we want to know the dynamics of the particle. Now, if we want to solve the problem, first we, uh, we assign the boundary condition. What is the boundary condition? Since the potential has an infinite discontinuity, uh, the wave of the particle cannot um, overcome the barrier. So, wave function is zero. Wave function is zero to the left of the well, and it is also zero to the right of the well. So, the wave function is zero. So. Um, wave function must match at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a. So, the boundary condition to the problem is uh, if we want to uh, solve uh, uh, time independent equation x is equal to 0 is equal to 0 is equal to x is equal to a. A part of this discussion may appear to be a repetition of what we have done in the earlier class. Now, now, del psi del x continue, del psi del x is not continuous at x is equal to 0 and a because if we approach the ball from uh, this direction, an impulsive force acts on the particle and which changes its value, uh, its uh, velocity. So, an impulsive force acts on the walls of an infinite potential well. So, there is no condition coming from the first derivative of the wave function. So, we write the Schrodinger equation in time independent Schrodinger equation for x less than equal to a greater than equal to 0. Here the potential is 0 so the equation is minus h line square by twice m d2 phi dx2 is equal to e phi which comes out to be phi double prime plus k square phi is equal to 0 where k square is equal to twice m e by h line square and it is greater than greater than 0 since we have earlier shown that a free particle cannot have cannot have negative energy so the solution is sinusoidal solution so solution solution is sinusoidal And which type of solution we shall assume stationary? Stationary state solution or progressive wave solution? Stationary wave solution is in terms of sine kx or and cos kx and progressive wave solution comes in terms of plus minus i kx. Now you consider the particle what the particle is doing. 
the particle is moving back and forth within the well so when you consider the particle moving towards the right it is represented by e to the power i k x on reflection it comes uh, Toward, it moves towards the left which is represented by e to the power minus i k x. So this back and forth motion of the free particle the, um, is the merely the superposition of identical uh, plane wave moving in opposite direction. So it produces stationary, uh, stationary wave. So in this case this type of solution will be beneficial to us. So we assume we assume stationary state solution solution This condition says B is equal to 0 and this condition leads to for non-trivial solution Ka is equal to n pi. So the quantization comes from there. So the acceptable solution is phi n of x is equal to a n sine of k n x where k n x is equal to n pi by a where n is equal to 1 2 3 etc 0 is excluded because it leads to a trivial solution uh, so the normal I first come to the normalization Actually, the integration extends from minus infinity to plus infinity, but the region from minus infinity to zero a function is zero, and from a to plus infinity is zero. So basically, this becomes zero to a is equal to one. That is equal to a n modulus square times sine square n pi x by a dx integrated from 0 to a this is equal to a modulus square by 2 this is 2 and this can be written as 1 minus cos of 2 n pi x by a dx integrated from 0 to a when this part is integrated it gives sign which is 0 at the both the limits so it is equal to which leads to the fact that a modulus is equal to root 2 by a so the normalized wave function is <laughs> normalized to a function is of the solution is phi n of x is equal to root 2 by a sine of k n x this is equal to root 2 by a sine of n pi a x now comes to the concept of energy uh, here we see that k is quantized so the corresponding energy is also quantized so we write E as En quantized energy values and this is given by uh, h line square pi E is given by h line square k square kn square by 2m and if we use kn is equal to this this becomes pi square h line square 
2m square n square which we will write as epsilon n square where epsilon is equal to pi square h line square by 2m s square so the epsilon is the quantization unit so we <coughs> we have find out the wave function and the um, wave function and the uh, a corresponding energy if we want to see how the wave function looks like or oh, before going to that i want to have a discussion on it uh, if we have particles um, um, uh, this is the mass of the particle mass of the particle m this is the length of the well and this is the value of epsilon in electron volt we consider a particle of mass one gram and this is one centimeter this is found to be of the order of 10 to the power minus 41 electron volt if we have one gram of a particle confined within a well of one angstrom, the energy values is of the order of 27 electron volt. Uh, if we have a particle of electron mass, this is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg confined in a well of 1 centimeter this is also of the order of 10 to the power 14 centimeter and finally if we have a um, have an electron confined within a well of within a well of length 1 angstrom it is found to be 30 of the order of 37 electron volt the experiments uh, whenever we perform experiment in spectroscopy it is found that the um, atomic spacing uh, the line spacing in terms of energy is of the order of electron volt the fine structure splitting that can be the spacing between the fine structure line that we can measure experimentally is of the order of milli electron volt and the high spacing between the hyperfine and tracks level energy levels is of the order of micro electron volt so experimental measurement experimentally we can measure energy up to 10 to the power 6 electron volt in it is found that this case cannot be measured or perceived in the present day available experimental technique so these power things appears to have continuous energy spectra but in this case the energy spectra is found to be discrete in principle in all the four examples the energy spectra are discrete but this is not these three cases are not perceptible to us so um, and this case as perceptible so here the quantum phenomena will be prominent so we conclude that this way uh, the eigenstate of the problem is like, like this and the corresponding energy E n is equal to epsilon n square another justification we can want to have this this is also the energy for the lowest possible state so the energy if we consider the energy the energy of the particle is minimum is e1 which is epsilon then e2 which is 4, ep, 4 epsilon and then e3 mm, e1 is epsilon e2 is equal to 4 epsilon e3 is equal to 9 epsilon and so on so forth so this is the minimum possible energy it is called the ground state energy in classical physics we found that the energy with there is no restriction on the energy of a system and so energy can be zero but here the energy cannot be zero it has a non-zero value 
सिंथा पार्टिकल हैज नो पोटेंशियल एनर्जी एंटायर एनर्जी कम्स फ्रॉम एंटायर एनर्जी कम्स फ्रॉम काइनेटिक एनर्जी हेड एंड जीरो एनर्जी टोटल एनर्जी मींस द पार्टिकल इज रेस्ट व्हिच इज नॉट पॉसिबल इन क्वांटम डोमेन बिकॉज़ दे आर द टाइनी पार्टिकल्स एंड द थर्मल ड्यू टू द थर्मल एनर्जी दे आर दे oscillates uh, oscillates due to thermal agitation and if we want to justify this energy value from uncertainty principle the uncertainty in the position of the particle is a and if we uh, use uncertainty principle like this then delta p is equal to h by 2 delta x this is h by 2a the kind the minimum possible energy e is equal to delta p square by twice m so this is h by 2a whole square by 2m on this becomes h square by h square by 8 m s square if we introduce h line this becomes pi square h line square by 2 m s square this is epsilon and it is also e1 so the ground state energy is non zero may be also be uh, considered as an as a manifestation of the uncertainty principle now we come to the uh, um, wave function the behavior of the wave function and their uh, and the corresponding probability densities and we see that there is uh, there are some non classical facts related to it so for n is equal to 1 the wave function is this so for corresponding lambda 1 if we call lambda 1 is equal to a this is the de broglie wavelength corresponding to n is equal to 1 <coughs> and it gives you the p1 the corresponding potential uh this is the probability this the evolution psi star psi is like this this is psi star psi and this is so psi we have used phi for n is equal to 2 this is zero and this is a so this is the probability distribution it is found that probability is a maximum at a by 4 and 3 a by 4 and is zero at a by 2 this is not we cannot understand this phenomena classically because if you the particle is moving back and forth so whenever it moves back and forth how can the particle pass from this point to that point without going through this so this is not a classical um, picture but if you were uh, you look at the particle from wave nature it is found that the stationary waves is formed and these are the nodal points so they are, they are may wave function may be uh, may have zero values so and for a higher state similar things will come this is a non classical again we, we want to point out this is a non classical feature uh, non class now we come to the another point that is the wave function for the wave function corresponding to the time dependent uh, schrodinger equation 
so the solution of time dependent solution of time dependent schrodinger equation as we have said that the time dependent equation is this and the previous study says that the, these are quantized so the corresponding time dependent solution is this is the solution of the time dependent solution schrodinger equation for a particular quantum number n what is the general solution the general solution is is in general it ranges from this where e n is given by this expression in practice this uh, this sum over sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity is not realizable so we write it as phi n h cross this is the web packet basically this is the web packet as time passes the web packet uh, moves from one place to another place to uh, <coughs> students may um, consult the book by Livoff in which case uh, few web packets has been shown and in the study material that is provided to you shows the um, web packet say a capital N is 10 then the the web packet is constructed and to make the same thing simple cn has been considered to be the same for all that is cn is 1 by cn comes out to be 1 upon root n and then the web packet has been constructed it is found that the web packet passes from uh, passes uh, uh, with time that is it safe changes with time and after a certain time the web packet regenerates its form the time regeneration is given by e to the power minus e epsilon n square t by h square let us consider this regenerates after a time tau so this is t plus tau by h cross so that we get e to the power minus or oh, n square is n square is missing e to the power epsilon n square tau by h cross as 1 we write it e to the power minus i this which gives you an expression for uh, tau mm, epsilon uh, tau which is found to be i is there n square is there so epsilon tau upon h cross is equal to 2 pi or tau is equal to 2 pi h cross by epsilon this is the time after which the wave packet regenerates that is it's become it 
uh, attains its f form at t is equal to 0. Uh, to, uh, another thing is that if we have the um, we have uh, solved basically this equation is obtained from the solution of the Hermi uh, uh, I am obtained from the uh, eigenvalue problem of Hermitian operator. The eigenvalue problem, the Hermitian operators has three important properties important properties. One is that the eigenvalues are real, which are indeed we have shown. The eigenfunct eigenfunctions corresponding to, the, to different eigenvalues are orthogonal, which, which you can easily verify. The orthogonality that is phi n star phi m dx when integrated from 0 to a, this is delta mn. It is left as an homework. The, which shows the orthogonality of the wave function and lastly is that the set of eigenfunctions of an Hermitian operator forms a complete basis. That is any function in this range, any well be a function in this range 0 to a can be represented <coughs> can be represented by uh, uh, in terms of the eigenfunctions. Let us consider a state, uh, time independent state. So we have a state psi of x which can be written as cn phi n of x where n ranges from 1 to infinity. The requirement that psi star psi dx from 0 to a is equal to 1 gives you summation over n is equal to 1 to 1 cn modular square. This we have calculated in the earlier class connection with the preliminary topics. <laughs> so this is the probability cn modular square is the probability of finding the particle in phi is equal to n amidst the amidst phi the superposition state as an example as an example, we consider a state of the state psi is equal to some constant a x a minus x. You see that the wave function is 0 at x is equal to 0 and it is also 0 at x is equal to a. As for this, we write it as summation over n is equal to 1 to infinity. Cn phi n of x. First thing is that A capital A has to be determined from the normalization consideration. The, when we normalize this, this becomes A modular square. Then we will have x a square x square minus twice a x cube plus x to the power 4 integrated from over dx from 0 to a. Uh, the result is which gives you This is A, capital A. So we write the final result. Now, how to determine this uh, constant expansion coefficient? We multiply both the sides of this expansion uh, by 
5 a.m. and into get over the complete period. So we will have on the le left. And on the right you will have sorry we write it with star so this this step has to be corrected This is delta function. So this is simply Cm. So we know the expression for Cm. So Cm writing explicitly this becomes A coming from this from this it is root 2 a and we write for a is 30 by a to the power 5 then we will have x a minus x sine of m pi a x dx integrated from 0 to a now cm is equal to uh, we we take this on the left hand side so it is a cube in the up a cube by root 60 cm then on the right hand side we will have integration first one is a x integration a x limits are always this and for the second term it is minus x square if we integrate the first integrand in par by parts the, the first term is a cos 1 and second term is a integration so let me do it and then when we integrate this we will have minus a square upon m pi will come out then we will have x cos of m pi a x 0 to a and then minus When we integrate this one, it gives sine function and in the limit it is 0. And here the lower limit gives 0 as x is involved. So this is equal to a times cos of m pi. This is the first term. Coming to this term. When we integrate it, a minus sign will come. So this is a by m pi common. First one is x square cos of m pi x upon a with limits 0 to a. And
this in the lower limit uh, lower limit is 0 and its upper limit it is equal to a square cos of m pi so if we consider this that this term gets cancelled with this and the resulting term is simply this one and all other term goes still so we will have this 2 also comes out and the sign is plus so, so we will have this multiplied by this so minus 2 a m pi times x First term is 0, because when we integrate another factor a by m pi will come, so it is x times which is 0 and then minus so when you integrate it we will get minus this is a minus which makes plus and integration of sign again minus so 2 a cube by m cube pi cube and this is cos of m pi x upon a 0 to 1 this part because cos of m pi is equal to minus 1 to the power m so whenever m is even it is 0 and m is equal to odd uh, it is non-zero so we can find out c1 by adjusting the terms so c1 for m is equal to 1 we have c1 is equal to this a cube a cube gets cancelled so this is Ah. this 60 was in the denominator it should come in the numerator there is a uh, check the calculation we have done so this is 2 for m is equal to 1 this is 2 this is 2 this is 4 so numerical factor is 4 then divided by root 60 and then we will have m cube m is 1 pi cube this is c1 it is found that uh, it is about 0.99 something and so c1 modular square is equal to about 99.86 percent we said that the, uh, any general state can be represented as a, com as a combination of the eigenstates and where the expansion coefficient, square of the expansion coefficient gives the probability of, the, of finding the particle in, the, uh, in that state. It is found that whenever we are considering the function uh, phi is equal to a x, a minus x, the, it is most likely that the particle is in the, in the first x in the ground state and it has a probability of this percentage. Actually, the problem is this that uh, the ground state wave function is this, it is the half 
uh, cycle of the sine wave. And if we plot this normalized wave function, the difference is very small. Very small. That's why it is the it is the ground state which alone is sufficient to represent the the wave function. For other functions which do not have such nice resemblance, uh, may require a large number of terms. So um, this much uh, for the asymmetric potential. Well, in the next class we shall consider. Uh, and one dimensional infinite rectangular symmetric potential well by symmetric potential well we mean the position of x axis is over at zero and the well extends from minus a by two to plus a by two and see what have what extra information do we get from such an analysis this is our subject topic in the next class